Are you ready to continue our look into how to recognize chords quickly and easily at the piano? Well, this is video three in the series, so if you missed the first two, then I've linked them here for you so you can either watch them now or watch them later. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves a piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then don't forget to subscribe. Simply click the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. In the previous two videos, we looked at how to get better in recognizing chords in both written music and in the notes that we're playing on the piano. Of course, we kept things simple, but as classical music isn't written in only a simple set of chords, today we're going to start looking at some of what I'm calling the more exotic chords. So that's chords with a few more notes in them. I guess some people might think, well, surely this is really just jazz. Why would a classical musician want to worry about these kind of chords? Well, Stay tuned because at the end I'll give you a little exercise to do where you'll be able to prove to yourself that in actual fact all of these chords are used all over classical music, even in the most simple things. Now the first kind of chord that I'd like to introduce you to is called a diminished seventh chord. They're effectively made up of minor thirds, quite easy to learn and they fit very nicely under your hand. A good way I found years ago to practice remembering where these are is to just play them chromatically like this. If you watch carefully, you'll see that in actual fact there are only three combinations of notes that go into making up all of the diminished seventh chords, which is another thing that makes them very simple to learn. The next chord we'll look at is called a major seventh chord. So to form this chord, you simply add the seventh note of the major scale to the chord, just like this. We then have two chords made in the same way, the sixth and the add nine. And here again, you simply add the corresponding note of the major scale to the chord. Finally, let's look at a chord called the sus4. So this strange little chord is where you effectively substitute the third note of the major scale, so the second note in a major chord, for the fourth note, a little like this. You will of course see many different kinds of chords as well that we've not looked at today. Things like a sharp 9 or a flat 9 or a sharp 13 or an 11. And whilst there's some value to learn in these, I, I wouldn't really necessarily worry about it too much. Because given the chords that we've learned now, we'll probably have 80% of our music covered by them. Okay, now for the fun part. What we're going to do first is pretty much what we did in that very first video. Except instead of using guitar tabs, we're now going to use fake books, as the jazz musicians call them. So this basically is a book full of lead sheets where you have the melody written out and a chord symbol above it. Again, whilst you're doing this, choose music that you know really, really well. 
These jazz fake books, effectively, what jazz musicians do is what they call reharmonizing, which is to substitute the simpler chords for slightly more exotic chords. And that gives you a much richer harmonic texture and it makes them so much more interesting to listen to. You know, going back to what I said in the first video about those famous videos on YouTube saying learn four chords and play thousands of songs, well, to me, it's sort of learn four chords and then get bored playing thousands of songs because they're not particularly interesting if you just use the basic chords. And of course, our main objective here is not really to be able to play jazz or popular music. It's to use this skill to help us in our classical music playing. And that's why we also need to have a better understanding of some of these more complex things, because aside the simplest of classical music, it's not written in very simplistic harmonic structures. To demonstrate what I mean, let's now listen to just the first few bars of Somewhere Over the Rainbow without the melody, but using a fake book type arrangement. I'm sure you'll agree that in that version there was an awful lot more variety than in the simpler version that I also demonstrated. So now what I recommend you do is spend a little bit of time each day and go through some of these richer arrangements. Don't try to play the melody just at the moment, just focus on the chords. Remember the object of the exercise is to be able to see a chord name and immediately translate that into a set of notes at the piano. One thing that I've said before is that sometimes the melody note might not be written as part of the chord that you're going to play. In these more exotic chords, sometimes arrangers will choose to write the chord as if the melody note is in it. So, for example, if you take the Beatles' Yesterday, if you play this, this actually starts on an E flat at nine, and then that moves to an E flat. Now, sometimes you might see it written in a fake book or a lead sheet just as being E flat all the way through, and sometimes you'll see it E flat at nine and then E flat. It doesn't really matter whichever way it's done. And the rule is if you're trying to work out a chord and the melody note seems odd to you and you're not sure where it would fit, then just ignore the melody note. All right, now for that little challenge I spoke about at the beginning of the video, if you were starting to think that this might be more focused on jazz rather than classical music. Now, get out your copy of Bach's C Major Prelude, the famous one. If you don't have it, then download a copy from IMSLP. What I want you to now do is start working out the chords in this piece. Just go through simply and you'll find that in no time at all you go away from the basic major, minor and seventh chords. You'll find in there you've got things such as a major seventh chord, which you could have been forgiven to thinking was a very jazz based chord, but here's Bach using it all those years ago. Keep going, you'll find diminished chords in there. You'll find all sorts of other more exotic chords. You know, as I said in that original video, this piece is considered to be, you know, one of the simpler pieces in the repertoire that many beginners, late beginners will, will learn to play. Yeah, it's far from being a simple piece when you think about the harmonies that are used in it. I'd advise you to stick with these exercises until you find that you can recognize pretty much any of the chords that we've covered in any key 
almost immediately without really having to think about it or work it out. Avoid the temptation to rush on and do other things. However, I bet that without even really thinking about it, you will automatically start noticing more and more of these chords in all of the music that you play. Now it is possible to convert 100% of what you see on a musical score into a set of chords. Personally, I really wouldn't bother trying to go to this level unless you really want to get into jazz, in which case, yeah, I guess it's well worth it. When we're playing our classical music, I bet with the chords we've learned over the past three videos, you've got more than enough to cover, I don't know, 70, 80% of the music that you're playing. And when there's something more exotic, it's not too difficult to work out the, the notes themselves rather than needing to think about it as a chord when you sight read or when you memorize. If you're not already then, please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click that little bell icon so that you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week.